No, I wasn't born bad. You guys got it. See, I'm trying to tell you, man, they lied. They lied so bad to you. I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with the Lord. There's very few serial killers that people feel sorry for when you hear their story. Terribly, you don't find yourself having remorse for the victims of Eileen. It's a weird feeling and concept you find yourself in when dipping into Eileen's life. By the end of hearing what Eileen went through in her own life, you just want to hug her. It's not to say she's not dangerous. Eileen has a short fuse. She's full of lies and paranoid about the thought of people just using her for her own story. And they do. The state of Florida took her life for the lives she took. You might even say that Eileen died when she was a young girl, assaulted by men early in her life. It wasn't that long ago when Eileen was with us, laughing and letting us know she made her peace with God. This is the sad story of Eileen Warnos being executed in Florida by lethal injection. Uh, I'm being really straight up about everything. There's no self-defense. I'm really sorry what happened about everything. I, I was in, in this, this, to me, this world is nothing but evil and all of us are full of evil one way or another. As Eileen shoots her last John in 1990, She's about to lose her freedom. Eileen's left a slew of death and robbery right behind her, not doing a good job of covering up her tracks. When she's caught, she'll plead her innocence, giving detailed accounts of what took place. But starting in November of 1989, Eileen will start murdering and robbing her Johns, doing what she's had to do throughout the majority of her life, sell herself to men. All of this will happen in almost one year to the Zack Day starting in November of 1989 and ending in 1990 of November. When she shoots her last John, the victims of Eileen will range from 40 to 65, all white males. She takes everything she can from them, jewelry, money, their vehicles. Police catch one of the murders pretty fast. They haven't really seen anything like this before. Why are men showing up in abandoned areas? in the woods, some away from their cars, some in their cars, some stripped, all of them shot. The problem with Eileen's victims is that it's leaving a huge mess behind. She's murdering men that have families, children, jobs, are well known in their communities, whether they're big or small. When they go missing, it's a huge search on what's going on. And Eileen's personality on the streets isn't quiet to say the least. This is what makes Eileen's story with her as a murderer unusual. It's really the first of its kind. Eileen's not into the usual perks of a serial killer. She kills to live another day, to gain what she can, to feed herself. She's not into torture, mutilation, assaulting her victim. But make no doubt about it, she has no sympathy for her victims. It's obvious that some of them she even enjoyed most likely for the men that had hurt her in the past from PTSD that she had built up over the years. Eileen said that her first murder was in total self-defense from a man named Richard, 51 years old. She agreed to be with him, driving to a secluded area in the woods. She said that Richard beat her, assaulted her in a violent way, but saying that she got the upper hand on him, finding a gun and shooting him with it. As Eileen went through the courts, her defense was simply that she killed in self-defense for the men that she was accused of killing, saying that they tried to harm her. But sadly for Eileen, the jurors see right through it. It doesn't make any sense, and it shouldn't. It's a lie. In January of 1992, Eileen is found guilty until she will be executed for her crime. In Eileen fashion, she tells the jury that they're scumbags yelling it at them, and then tells the judge she'll kill again. Eileen spends the majority of the next decade in prison. She's never truly forgotten about. Documentaries are made about her, true crime stories. Every now and then the media covers it again. When you watch and listen to hours of interviews and tape of Eileen, you honestly see the two sides of her. You see a person that is wanting to be loved, to fit in, and someone that might even be joyous to be around. But you can also see the side of Eileen that hates the world and hates herself. While Eileen is sitting in prison, she really never has a moment to just settle down. 
it would seem. She sent hundreds of letters from people trying to visit her. Eileen, even in the beginning, connects with a lot of people with her story, her upbringing, not having a stable home, being abused, but the media tries to make her out to be a monster as one of the worst serial killers they've ever seen. But the big problem that Eileen has to deal with are with people lying to her, say they're one thing, but turn out to be something else as a reporter to learn what they can about her story in detail that no one else knows for a book they're writing or a script they're working on. Even police are selling info to reporters that are trying to find details in the crime. Eileen becomes paranoid of everyone, even her lawyers. When you look at Eileen's story, it may be one of the most well-known. From TV shows, early movies, cheaply made, even today, Eileen will show up from time to time in television shows, portraying her as something evil. Not to mention that she has one of the most well-known movies based on her story that's even won awards. Eileen knows she can't fight them off forever, and she didn't. In the beginning, Eileen pleads that she was framed by the cops, corrupt cops, and that the killings are in self-defense, but that's not the story Eileen's going to die with. Towards the end of her life, she's talking to only a handful of people, but one person that won't talk to her that hurts the most is the person Eileen was on the run with, Tyra, who Eileen called Ty. Eileen and Ty were in love, living together. Although Ty still pleads her innocence today that she knew nothing about the murders, but knew that Eileen was up to no good. Eventually, while Eileen is in prison, Ty would cut off Eileen out of her life, riding her, saying she was going her own way. It's a heartbreak that Eileen had to go through by herself, alone in a cell. Eileen does have her childhood friend that comes to see her, Dawn. They write back and forth and just trying to have some normalcy between the other one. Dawn today still has hundreds of Eileen's letters that she keeps in a vault in her own home. Eileen has been in prison since her arrest in 1991. She spent the majority of her time on death row at Florida Department of Corrections where the state would condemn her for her crimes. But at the end of her last days, Eileen would be sent to Florida State Prison, the same prison that many other famous serial killers have died at by lethal injection or the electric chair. While in prison, she grips to her faith of Christianity from an odd situation that would occur. Eileen would be adopted by a couple bringing her to her faith, even making Eileen change her mind on her life and what would be the first baby steps of Eileen's death. The day of Eileen's judgment has come on October 9th, 2002. The day before, she had her last moment with Dawn, talking and having their last laughs together. As Dawn gets up, hugs Eileen, she walks down the hall, saying, all she could hear was Eileen saying, I love you, I'll see you soon, on the other side. But on Eileen's last day, it said that she would sleep much of the day away, at least just lying there with her eyes closed. It said that they woke up Eileen not long before she was walked to the execution chamber. Eileen refused to eat food. Instead, just having a cup of black coffee, the last taste, the last smell she ever had from this world. Eileen wrote her last note to whomever. In it, Eileen's angry. She blames Ty the police, people around her. Her anger has taken over her mind. She's just mad in the end. Eileen made it clear in the last few interviews and months in giving her side of the story that police knew who she was and that they were allowing her to murder men, trying to make her into a serial killer. It's just a story that Eileen's come up with. At 9 a.m., Eileen has walked into the death chamber. She's strapped to the gurney. The IV is pushed into her vein. Eileen gives her last words that become perhaps the most famous last words in the history of executions. The last words that Eileen spoke while smiling were this, I would just like to say, I'm sailing with the rock, and I'll be back, like Independence Day, with Jesus, June 6th, like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back, I'll be back. The execution is then carried out, and Eileen is condemned to die. The three-dose injection is shot through Eileen's body. At 9.47 a.m., it said that Eileen is gray 
with a blue light glow over her body. Her eyes are closed, and she's pronounced dead. Her execution goes as planned, with no problems. She's cremated and given to Dawn, the only person that Eileen trusted in the end. Dawn took Eileen back to her home, where she planted a small tree, scattered Eileen's ashes around it, mixed it in with the soil to grow into the tree system. Back where Eileen was born, in Michigan, maybe the truth about Eileen is that maybe she was right about herself. She had a very evil side that she didn't trust. The crimes she committed on these men, they were ruthless, they were cold-blooded and horrifying. The men begging for their life, while Eileen humiliated them in the end. Eileen was right about the world being a scary place, full of evil. There's no doubt that she had a hatred towards the world and towards her upbringing. Why she could never just handle life, never be a normal person in society. Why she had to have a bad mother, a sick and twisted father. She never had a chance to see real love and what it was as a child. You wish you could just go back when she was a little girl and rescue her and give her a life that she was owed. But no matter how you cut the pie, Eileen was what she was in the end, ruthless. Eileen hated being called a serial killer and being lumped in with the rest of them, and it's understandable on her own part. But in the end, Eileen's story will never be forgotten. I killed those seven men in first degree murder and robbery. As they said, they had it right, a serial killer. Not so much like thrill kill, I was into the robin biz. I mean, you know, serial killers are in this thrill killing jazz. I was into the robbing, just and eliminate a witness. But still then again, I got a number, so it's serial killer. But I'm coming clean before I go in that execution chamber and be executed, that uh, I killed him 